Hi guys, uh, this video isn't going to have any technical data in it. I'm afraid it's just me waffling on about where I think I'm going with the project. I um, don't think you can have got very far at looking at uh, the production of HHO uh, without coming across the work of Stanley Meir. And whilst I'm not setting out to replicate what Mia has done, uh, clearly he's done some some very good stuff, and um, I'll take um, you know quite a lot from what I've read about uh, what he's done. Um, but I, I want to play my own game. I want to do my own thing. But uh, one of the nice things um, uh, that um, Mia did was to use a series resonant. Uh, circuit to activate the cell and uh, I like that idea it's a, it's a very practical thing to do um, but I see that people get confused with resonance I see that people can confuse uh, uh, audio or mechanical <laughs> resonance with electrical resonance uh, and even on the uh, electrical side they can confuse uh, series with parallel uh, resonance circuits and uh, of course in a parallel resonance circuit the, uh, the current is maximised at uh, resonance whereas in a series circuit it's the voltage uh, that's maximised at resonance. Um, most of my work uh, has been with parallel resonance circuits and I've designed and manufactured uh, induction heating equipment for use in uh, scientific and industrial applications and um, I, I find when I have to think in, um, uh, as, in terms of series circuits I always feel as I have to stand on my head as I can say most of my work has, been, has involved parallel resonance circuits. Um, and uh, there's a big problem with, with if you make an induction heater and uh, you have a, a, a tank circuit, a coil and a capacitor. The coil you can think of as the primary of a transformer and the part that you're heating is like the short circuit secondary of a transformer. And um, you know what happens to short circuit secondaries, they, they burn out. Well, induction heating is, um, you know, involves controlling that pr process so as you, you don't short out and destroy things. Um, and uh, it, it has to be a very controllable process. And uh, one of the problems that you have uh, with an induction heating application is if the, a component is moved into and or out of a coil rapidly, um, so that changes the tank circuit frequency. So if you're hitting the tank with a, a constant frequency, uh, constant pulses of energy, you know, the makeup current, um, and then you suddenly take this part out, then the, the timing issue can be catastrophic if you get it wrong. And um, uh, in the old days when we had um, valve generators, or what my American colleagues would call tubes, um, uh, then it was typically we'd have a Hartley oscillator, so self oscillatory circuit. Uh, or a culpit uh, uh, oscillator. Uh, so any changes in the tank circuit were naturally followed by uh, the power source. Um, that sort of changed when we went to thyristors and transistors um, and um, uh, we manufactured uh, a number of different um, systems, uh, circuit types and um, uh, had a very successful microprocessor controlled transistorized induction heater where a, a, a microprocessor tracks uh, the, uh, the natural resonant frequency and subsequently fires pulses uh, at the right moment in time. But we had some applications where the uh, metal parts have been almost fired through the coil so rapidly that the processor couldn't track them and, and we simply couldn't carry out those applications. So I designed and developed um, uh, a, a self oscillatory or a driven uh, oscillatory circuit using the CMOS um, uh, IC 
uh, a 4046 and that's a, a phase lock loop chip uh, that's not the only component in the circuit it, it, got, it gets to be very complicated um, but the 4046 is a phase lock loop chip uh, which enables um, uh, one to, to measure the voltage and current in a tank circuit and take the timing signals and drive uh, an oscillator at the appropriate frequency to drive that tank circuit and it can do it very quickly and um, oh, I must have produced somewhere between it's going to be 50 and 100 it may have been more than 100 uh, machines um, with output powers from uh, around uh, one kilowatt, 500 watts to a, a kilowatt at the at the low end, through to I think the biggest phase lock loop system I made was something like an 80 kilowatt uh, for the National Physical Laboratory, and uh, those guys had an extremely demanding application that required very very precise um, feedback, and the 4046 was ideal for that. Um, uh, now with um, modern uh, processors and sophisticated software that, that's not a problem but uh, years ago that, that was an issue. The only problem I have is um, uh, I'm not an expert in things like this, I'm not an expert with the 4046 so uh, I have to sort of get the data book and read through and I have to learn uh, and understand what the chip's capable of and then put it into practice and, and develop it. And once you've developed a, a, a really good circuit then you, you don't mess with it. And of course all that was years ago and I've forgotten so um, uh, I shall have to revisit that and relearn um, that technology because I'm certainly not going to go down the processor route and um, all that. Um, Okay, why do I why do I want to do this? Um, with the little test cell, everything I do is going to be with the test cell that I've already shown you. Um, uh, what I'm anticipating is that as I start to produce gas, I'm anticipating that the capacitance of those two plates is going to change because the amount of uh, water dielectric between the plates will change subject to how much gas is there. If it's one big gas bubble then they'll, they'll, we'll have essentially air dielectric. If it's full of water then it'll have a water dielectric. So uh, I think it's going to be necessary to actually track um, resonance through uh, a range of frequencies. I don't know what the ideal frequency to hit the water with uh, is going to be. I suspect it's in the gigahertz or the megahertz range. Now I don't really want to go up there, so I'm, I'm going to work at the at the low end of the radio frequency uh, spectrum to start. Uh, so uh, more in the kilohertz range is what I'm thinking. Um, so um, I just wanted to share with you uh, some photographs. Um, got some photographs I was looking at of um, equipment that uh, I used to make and um, this is, um, I'll put it on the screen, but this is a TR2 and this uh, uh, this was a 2 kilowatt um, phase lock loop transistorized induction heater so using MOSFETs in the output stages and that would uh, continuously deliver Two kilowatts, and I say that could have been a little metal, a little metal melting application, or plastic to metal bonding, soldering, brazing, um, and um, oh, there's a, another photograph. I subsequently called it Phase Two because we already had a, a, a TR2 in the range, um, but I, I just thought. Um, if you saw some of these photographs, it might give you some idea, you know, give me some credibility. These are uh, equipments that we manufactured and um, uh, some of the machines are, are, are quite large and um, uh, this is uh, equipment for the automotive and um, scientific industries. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure where the 
uh, the project is going to go. Um, I hope to produce a, a control circuit that um, I will put on YouTube, so it, it will be there for, for others to share. Um, I'm not interested in producing high volumes of gas at this stage, I'm more interested in being able to produce it uh, economically, efficiently. Um, so I figure that you know um, we can all uh, learn from other people and their mistakes so I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know my mistakes as well. Um, uh, but I think you know the, the work that people like uh, Stan Mears have done, I think we can stand on his shoulders and we can be a bit taller. So if at the end of this uh, you can stand on my shoulders and uh, do something, then you'll be twice as tall as me and hopefully uh, one day um, we'll get to the bottom of this because I think there's an awful lot of water out there. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an awful shame not to be able to tap it efficiently and get the energy out of it. Whether or not that'll be a good thing when that day comes, uh, I don't know, maybe it could be a bad thing for us. But uh, anyway, I will do my bit, uh, hopefully. Um, thanks for the interest shown in the, in the project, I, I do appreciate that and the feedback that I get. I um, hope you find this uh, not too boring, hopefully a little bit interesting. Um, thanks for watching guys, bye bye.